friends, and welcome to The World Transformed. Tonight we're talking about fiction becoming reality. My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-host, Stephen Gordon. Hello, Stephen. Hey, Phil. How are you? Well, I am super fantastic. Happy Friday. How are you, my friend? Man, glad to be here at the end of the week. Uh, we've got 4th of July approaching next week, and that's awesome, too. But, yeah, uh, a sort of a semi-geek out show tonight, right? Yeah, I was going to call this a geek out, but it's got a real news story kind of driving it. So I didn't know if we could call it a geek out or not. It's kind of a semi-geek. If we have fun with it, it's a geek out. Well, then every show we do is a geek out, right? I mean, we, That's we true. change the name of the show to geek out. But typically, we've been, we've been preserving the term geeking out for comics, movies, books, you know, all the kind of entertainment side of it. And then the hard science and the technology and the blue sky speculation like we did on Wednesday – that's serious, right, We're, as opposed to geeking out. But here we go. Here's the conjunction of the two, right? Here's this story. Nanobots kill off cancerous tumors as fiction becomes reality. And this is so awesome. I saw this. Actually, Thomas Fry had published something about this before I saw the story here. And this is it, okay? This is the thing we've been talking about forever. I mean, if you've heard any speculation about nanobots in your life, you've heard one of two things, right? Either they're going to de deconstruct the whole world and dissolve us into gray goo, or they'll be shot into the human body and kill cancer cells, right? I mean, those, <laughs> these are the... <laughs> there's, no, there's no middle ground. It's either going to be the greatest thing ever or the worst thing ever, right? So. Right, right. I mean, those are, the, those are the big applications. Either they're the little deconstructors that take the world apart, or they go into our bloodstream and they, they take the plaque out of our arteries so we don't have heart attacks, and they... they go single combat against cancer cells and take them out, right, and cure cancer. And, and while they're at it, they take care of bacterial infections just by splitting open the, uh, the bacterial cells, cell right. walls, right? Right. And uh, so you evolve a the defense of that, why don't you, bacteria? You can't. So it takes care of our, our antibiotic problem. You get all of that when you get full-blown medical nanobots, right? So, right. yeah. Nanobots, by the way, nano robots, nanoscale robots, tiny, tiny machines down at the molecular level. That's what we're talking about here. And right. just to read a, a passage here the, from the story, the idea of armies of minuscule robots patrolling our bodies, cleaning and maintaining them has been a theme in science fiction for decades. The plot of a 1966 film, Fantastic Voyage, in which a submarine of scientists is shrunk to microscopic size and injected into the bloodstream of a colleague in order to help save his life is now coming closer to reality. Well, here's what's interesting to me is it's true this is kind of like Fantastic Voyage, but I've been hearing about nanobots for years, and it's just been in the – it's more like the Wednesday show, right? People talking about here's what nanotechnology is going to allow. Here's some really awesome coming technological capability. Not so much fiction as just kind of fun, nonfiction speculation about the future. And that's kind of what's coming true, too. Yeah, it's a little bit like Fantastic Voyage, but it, maybe it's more like just the sort of thing we talk about. It's more like – Fast forward radio coming true. Stuff we were talking about 15 years, or not 15 years ago, maybe on the speculus 15 years ago, but 10 years ago on the podcast we were talking about this, and now it's happening. It's just right. another one of the many things that we said would happen that is happening. So let's take a moment and be very self-satisfied about that, I think. But <laughs> we take our bows. After we enjoy the moment, we can say, that's awesome, but let's move on. What are the other fictional and speculative realities that we most want to see become actual headlines. Because I'm super excited about this one, and I don't think you can downplay the awesomeness of it. And everything you just said is absolutely correct. Basically, you're talking about the nanobot that eventually becomes the single combat warrior that takes on everything you don't want in your body at the cellular level, right? It takes on the cancer, right. takes on the plaque, takes on the cellular damage, right? And prevents aging from occurring, right? I mean, ultimately, they're going to do all that. Great. So what else? What are the other fictional or speculative realities that, Stephen, you most want to see become an actual headline? I think this is a big one, but is there any that rank up there with it? How about the ability to catalog life on this planet to a degree we've never been able to do before, where, I mean, we pretty much have it all sequenced and everything, genomes of, of all flora, all fauna. If something looks like it's on its way of going out, we can just bring it back if and when we need to, to for purposes of biodiversity. Why not? And even when you know, we travel, to, uh, travel out into the galaxy, take with us our library of, of a biodiverse Earth with us so that uh, whenever we terraform, if we find places that are suitable and terraform, 
we have the entire genome of the of, of our planet with us when we go. How about that? And I like it. That's fantastic. And in fact, you know what? I I don't even recall. I'm sure there is, and someone geekier than us can help us out. I don't recall seeing that being treated fictionally, at least not to that level of detail, right? There, there are stories that come close to that, but that idea as just itself, all I'm saying, Stephen, is you can sell that one as a story, right, if you want to. If you... <laughs> yeah, it seemed like that, that idea was sort of in uh, a Don Bluth animated movie. Uh, Earth is basically blown up by aliens or something, and, and so humanity are a bunch of refugees, and we end up finding a second, a second Earth. Oh, and, and we bring everything with us? We've got it kind of like an arc? Yes. Yeah. The, we have the library. We have the, oh, okay. Uh, I don't know this movie. It Rainy was not Bells. very well received. I don't even think it made its budget back. Probably. But it was the idea. They had digitized the whole biome, right? All of life That's on right. Earth. That's right. all. That at all. All digitized, and they could just basically sort of print it out to get it going. That's again. right. That's right, And which is what they did. Um, Earth 2, which was uh, affectionately known as Planet Bob in that movie. Huh. Oh, Planet Bob. I wonder yeah. if there was any connection there between that and the inspiration for the Baba verse. Huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe Robert's just bigger, big in the future. I thought <laughs> Somehow the name Bob is going to play a major role in our moving into space. It just seems almost almost inevitable. Well, I like that one a lot. I, I, I think yeah. that, that that one has got some legs, and I'd like to see that one happen. We, we've talked about the medical applications of the nanobots, and I feel like we kind of stepped on some of the ones that you had mentioned we might get to, anti-aging being one, conquering obesity being yeah. another. And those are things that we may do through nanobots or we may do through other means. But right. conquering aging is for sure on its own a standalone scenario that is worth pursuing and that we want to see happen, right? That one right. is up there with, well, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to find a bigger one than that, I would, I would guess. To me, conquering aging is the flip side of eliminating disease. I think those two things have so much to do with each other that if you make one happen, you've effectively made the other one happen. Very few health issues that we can face as people are not better handled by the 20-year-old over the 8-year-old. Yeah. Right. It's just, I mean, it just pays to be young. It really, really does. If there are a way to keep ourselves biologically young, whenever you do have some sort of health problem, uh, they'll t- it'll tend to be uh, minor and much more treatable than it would right. have been had, had uh, you, you've been a frail. The other side of that is so much of what we think of as aging is actually just this wear and tear, long-term damage to the body. The heart the heart wears down, the the joints wear down, right? Uh, it, we call each of those things individual diseases, but in fact, it's just a sort of a overarching senescence, an overarching fragility to the system, right, that needs to be addressed. Yeah. And if you if you address it by saying we're curing all these diseases or if you address it by saying we're going to make human beings anti-senescent, we're going to make human beings such that they can't age, either way, you're going to come to very very near the same the same result, which is one reason I'm kind of excited about the fact that some people are talking about approaching it from that disease standpoint. I think that there's probably a lot to be said for doing both, right, for hitting it both ways because there will probably be some breakthroughs each way. That that will ultimately help find that find that connection in the middle. But that one is that one is a big one. That, uh, I would say if there's one I'm really looking forward to, speaking as a guy who's not getting any younger, it's got to be that one. Hey, I got to tell you, Phil, that uh, you, I, I mentioned how many, how many months ago, maybe as long as long ago as six months ago, mentioned uh, taking NAD plus. Uh, oh yeah. You asked me, you know, as, as, after I started, any any effects, and I. I have to say, no, no, I, I, I haven't noticed anything. I feel like that uh, this stuff is working for me. Um, All right. And, I, and so I just, you know, it's it's something you might want to consider. If, like me, you're not getting any younger. You know, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I think we have that in common, you know, unlike many of our <laughs> listeners. That's we, right. Uh, that are we seem to be aging a year every year. It's just uh, exactly. one to one. So yeah, it's, I'm sleeping better at night, uh, and and there you know there's there's just there's some markers that I'm kind of you know, I'm kind of watching here that uh, uh, seem to indicate it's doing me some good. So I uh, all right, I'm sold. I'm yeah, gonna I'm, yeah. I, I said I was going to it. Now I'm definitely gonna, when I I tell you what after the show, send me the link the kind you're using, and I'm gonna order it tonight. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. All right. I'm, I'm getting some NAD plus. 
because you know what? I need to live long enough to see uh, anti-aging, right? That's- if NA, NAD gives you any marginal benefit, it, it to get you to the real to the real thing, right? The, the real tech. Um, that's, Absolutely, that's, that's what you want. So yeah. And, and the words of Ray Kurzweil, right? Live long enough to live forever. That's the that's right. That's the key, or as we like to say, live to see it. Hey, but we're not done. We're still talking. I. I <laughs> <laughs> I, I use that phrase premature. Hey, I can say it anytime I want to. Okay, that's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's our deal. We can say it whenever we want. Uh, the other one, probably that's that's right up there with those, is the move of humanity into space, which is con- closely connected to the library one you were talking about, right? The, right? And there's a there's a real survival of us that aspect to doing that, right? That if we can branch out into space. Elon Musk talks about how important that is so that we don't have all our eggs in one basket and we don't get destroyed. That will be great. If we have the technology that we can get to Mars, ultimately we can get out of the solar system and, and find these planets to terraform per, per your discussion, that's good, right? Because that's the resilience of not only humanity, but of all of the biosphere of this planet, right? That, that um, if we have the technology to get there and we have that library you were talking about, we're going to go on, right? It's not going to be the end of us if this planet or if the sun goes bye-bye, which aren't terribly likely things to have happen, but you know what? They can happen. It's not inconceivable that those would happen. And those are, going back to the Monday show, right? Talk about risks, right? That's kind of the biggest risk of all. What's the, what, what are the risks that humanity as a species faces, right? That Earth as a, as a biosphere faces. Well, those are kind of our insurance policies against those. So it'll be really cool to see us achieve a permanent presence in space because that'll be cool speaking you know just as a, in a total geek out kind of a fashion that'll be awesome but it'll also be really important for that from that perspective because it's going to push us in that direction very cool very cool all right any others you got you got any others well yeah i was uh, i was going to bring in general purpose robots now we have robots that do very specific things right now industrial robots can build a car or make a hamburger even nowadays that's something yep. new that uh, saw that the burger uh, making robot yes yeah that's right uh but you know I, I want the robot that's like a maid in jetsons or whatever right you know you <laughs> yeah. want the that does anything I, I need it to do around the house or you know mow the lawn or uh you know wash the dishes or whatever you know cook a uh, gourmet meal I'm, you know i'm up yeah. to eating it i'm just not up to fixing it you know that's right um, take this call for me Right, yeah, that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, a general purpose robot that is not with us yet, and uh, it might be a little while. But uh, do you have a timeline? When do you expect to see that? I wonder when we'll see a general purpose robot. Is it ten years out? Is it twenty years out? And and there will be a period of time between the really early general purpose robots and the full blown they can do you know anything you need. Yeah, it'll be the super expensive thing that only the very wealthy can afford but sucks still right it's yeah. just not it's not all that great it can only do a few things and then it'll be like five years later everybody can ha- afford one and it's going to be 10 times better than that right? right that's the way these things work i would say that this is this is going to be at least 10 years probably more like 15 until we get the very expensive thing that the rich people put in their homes and right uh, and then followed probably within uh, you know four or five short years after that with with uh, the one that's about one tenth the price of the original and and can do so many more things. So well, what's I, interesting I is they they will only exist as consumer products for a certain period of time because when you have Rosie, it's already questionable as to whether that's something you should even own, right? By the time you get to Data, right? By the time you get to one of the robots from the Isaac Asimov robot novels. I don't think people will feel right about yeah, like owning them, right? The, 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 yeah, there's you know, the, there's the whole progression of in the movie Bicentennial Man uh, of of that character from a, a basically a household appliance to a fully realized human being. It starts so as a consumer point. product and ends up a member of the family, right? Literally That's a right. member of the family, right? or, or figuratively uh, anyway. Or I don't know. I haven't seen the movie actually, so I don't know that story, but. You haven't seen it? Yeah, I've, I've never seen it. I've, I've actually never oh seen it. Oh, my gosh, Bill. You've got and to I've see never that read movie. the book. I know. And I've read all the Isaac Asimov robot books except for that one. The movie sort of follows the novel, but and, but kind of goes its own way. But it's still 
It's really, really good. I'm overdue. So uh, yeah. after yeah. Yeah, I overdue. order my NAD Plus, I'm going to order a copy of my <laughs> Exactly. Man. Uh, go on Amazon, get them both. Uh, they're both there, I promise. But going back to the Monday show, that's the risk, right? I mean, because the wonderful thing is going to be the general purpose robot. The risk is... At some point, I, I suspect legislation will pass to say that it's, it, it's permissible to own a robot at this level, but no further. You know, right. this is the this is the most advanced robot you can own. If the robot is any more advanced than this, then it's considered an individual, and you can't own that. that Lord knows how they'll ever get it right, but we're, we're going to have yeah, to err on the exactly. side of giving robots too much credit. That's all there is to it. We'll have to be. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Have to be very careful about that. Well, there you go. Lots of great stuff to look forward to. I, I don't know that we matched anything quite as exciting as the nanobots curing cancer, but these other things as they develop are going to be fun to watch. And you know what? It just It's nice at the end of the week to say, hey, we got an awful lot to look forward to, don't we, Stephen? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. And speaking of things to look forward to, we're going to be back next week with three brand new shows. It's been great having you all with us. Stephen, been great talking with you. And until next time, live to see it. Mm-hmm.